Hi guys. Uh, today I'm here to talk to you about word problems involving exponential growth or decay. Um, this is coming out of section 7.1 and 7.2. Uh, there will be more word problems uh, towards the end of the uh, chapter. Uh, that'll be a little bit more complicated, but we're going we're gonna to start off uh, in the beginning here uh, with some more basic ideas. Uh, the first type of um, exponential function that we want to take a look at is something called periodic growth and decay functions. All right, here is the formula that you have to mem o rise right here. All right, the periodic growth and decay function says if I have uh, a equals p parentheses 1 plus r over n to the nt power, what do all these represent? Well, let's take a look. The a the A stands for the amount that you're going to have over time. The P stands for the starting amount. This P actually stands for a word, and that word is principal. Okay, but principal just means your starting amount. Your R in the, in the equation stands for your percent of increase or decrease. Now, we always need to change that percent to a decimal. Also, notice if it's a decrease for decay, you must use a negative number for R. Okay? Now, for interest, as in money, this N will stand for how many times we're going to compound your interest per year. Okay? So N is however uh, the number of times compounded per year. Notice that this N appears twice in the equation, once in the bottom of the fraction, and then once as a part of the exponent. Okay? And then lastly, there's a lowercase t up here. This t stands for the total number of years, usually it's years, that uh, we're looking at for the word problem. That's one of the uh, exponential functions that we're going to be dealing with. The other one is when things are continuously growing or decaying, right? So they're constantly increasing or decreasing. That's where we use this formula. A equals p times e to the rt power. Now this a value is the same a that you saw above. It's the amount you're going to have over time. This p is your principal again, your starting amount. The r is still the percentage rate, and the t is the time uh, that you're dealing with. This e. This e is not a variable, but it actually represents a very complicated looking number. This E is known as the natural number. And it represents this constant, 2.718281828459045. Okay? This E is like pi. You know how pi represents a, a, a long decimal that never terminates, but never repeats? Well, E does the same thing. It represents this decimal number that never terminates and never repeats. Uh, it's just, you know, we don't want to have to write that number out every time, so we use E uh, to represent that number. Actually, for two, uh, for two prize questions, the first question is, where does, what does the number, or the letter E stand for? It actually stands for a word. And then secondly, what president is associated with the number E and why? All right, first person to tell me that tomorrow, Wednesday, uh, will win a prize. Okay, um, each of those questions. All right, uh, so ladies and gentlemen, if E represents 2.718, yada, 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 uh, what if I told you to evaluate, say, E to the fourth power? Well, to do this, that would be that 2.718, yada, 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 to the fourth power, right? Well, to do that, you'd need a calculator. So on your calculator, if you want to do so this 2.718 on your calculator, let's take a look at the bring a calculator into the screen here. To do this, you actually have two E buttons. There's an E button right above the divide symbol, right here. There's an E button there, but we don't want to use that one. That one you can use, but it's not very uh, uh, widely used. And then if you look down a little bit lower on the calculator, if you look down, if you look down uh, on your left-hand side of the calculator, you'll see a little LN button here. Well, if you use the second function feature, you'll see an E to the X button. 
And that one is going to be more often used. So if I wanted to do e to the fourth, I'm going to hit second, ln, which gives, you notice that e to the exponent. Now you just type in your exponent, so four, and then hit enter, and you get 54.59, yada, yada, yada. Which kind of makes sense, because if two to the fourth, if you put, e is 2.71, right? If, if you put two to the fourth power, you get 16. If you put 3 to the 4th power, that's 81. So does it make sense that e to the 4th power has to be somewhere between 16 and 81? And in this case, it's 54.92. Let's take a look at the second example. So let's actually, uh, I'll drag this over here. So this answer, e to the 4th, is 54.98, yada, yada, yada. Doing e to the negative 2, you guys try that on your calculators at home. Second, ln, negative 2. What did you guys get? Well, I got 0.1315, yada, yada, yada. Right? Does that make sense to you why it would be 0.13? Why would you get a decimal? What about this problem made you go from a bigger number to a smaller number? That's right. It's this exponent that's negative. Don't forget that e to the negative 2 is the same thing as 1 over e squared. And e squared, which should be somewhere between 4 and 9, which makes sense. So this is somewhere between 1 fourth and 1 ninth. And specifically, it is this 0.1353, yada, yada, yada. Okay? Anywho, so that's what the, the number e stands for. It stands, or the letter e stands for. It stands for this number right here. Okay. Now let's look at how we can apply this to some word problems, okay? First of all, we want to talk about interest, like at a bank or something like that. Compound interest. What is compound interest? Well, it's a type of interest. You, probably, you guys probably did simple interest back in elementary school. Now we're going to take a look at something called compound interest. Compound interest is a type of interest where not only do you get interest paid on the original amount of money you put into the bank, but if you've already earned interest and they've put it into your account, well, the next time they, ca they calculate your interest, they don't just use the original amount like they do in simple interest, but they use the total amount of money that you have in, including that, any interest that they've already added into your account. Now, there are two types of compound interest. There's something called periodic and continuous. Periodic is where they pay you your interest after a set period of time, such as monthly, which would be 12 times a year, quarterly, which would be four times a year, or just yearly, which would be like once a year. What would, they, what would you uh, say if I said daily? What if they paid you your interest daily? Think about that. Now, continuous interest is where we assume that you're paid, being paid your interest constantly. They're not, they're not doing it periodically. They're constantly paying your interest. Right? That's another type, and that's why you have a different formula. The next idea is the word depreciation. Depreciation means that you're going to lose value over time. You're going to lose your value over time. Okay? Items such as cars, boats, accordions, things like that. Well, once you buy them, does it make sense that the older they get, the less value they're going to be? Because you're using them, right? So they lose value. We say that they're depreciating. In this class, we'll always assume that everything only is the only uh, everything depreciates periodically, and that's only every year, once a year. Things only depreciate once a year, okay? All right, now, let's take a look at how we can um, use these formulas in some word problems. Fred, take a look at this first one. Uh, Tim, buck two, invests $5,000 into an account paying 3% per year compounded quarterly. How much money will he have after six years? Well, in this problem, uh, the, the important uh, part of this is that it's compounded quarterly. Because again, I've got two formulas that I've talked about the periodic formula and the continuous. The, unless it says continuous, you never use the continuous formula, unless uh, it makes sense to. In this case, since that's compounded quarterly, that's periodic, so I write the periodic formula. A equals P parentheses 1 plus R over N to the NT power. And I look at what my variables uh, represent. Well, I know that P is my starting cash. Uh, Tim is putting five grand into the, into the account, so 5,000 is P. I know that the, the rate of uh, increase is 3%, so that's 0 0.03. The number of times that he's compounded, N, 
he's compounding it quarterly, so that means four times a year they're going to pay him his interest. And the number of years that he's putting the money in the account for is six years. Well, the, and the final variable, A, that I'm looking for is the total amount that I'll have left, right? By the way, let it make sense. In this problem, if I were to count my variables, I've got one variable, two variables, three variables, four variables, five total variables. Basic algebra says you can only have one variable in the equation if you want to solve, so I know that I have to know four out of the five variables. And in fact, I do. Now, the nice thing is, is that if you know which formula to use and you know which number goes where, the calculator will do all the work for you. To figure out the total amount of money you're going to have, Tim's going to have after six years, you just say A equals 5,000, parentheses 1 plus 0.03 divided by 4 to the 4 times 6 power. Okay? Once you've filled in your formula, you can just type it into your calculator, just as you see it. I'm going to go 5,000, parentheses, 1 plus 0.03 divided by 4, close parentheses, and then raise that to the exponent of 4 times 6. Notice, make sure that that 4 and the 6 are both exponents. If, if that 6 somehow drops down to not being an exponent, you're going to be doing the wrong math. Now, when I hit enter, I get $5,982 and se basically 7 cents. So this math tells me that he's going to be making this much money. Okay? That's $5,982. And seven cents. So let it make sense. If he started with five thousand dollars and now his total amount is five thousand nine hundred eighty two dollars and seven cents, does it make sense that his interest that he earned would be just nine hundred eighty two dollars and seven cents? Okay, uh, let's do it again. Let's do another problem now. Take a look at the next problem. All right, the next problem says. Tim buys a new car. Oh, by the way, oh, my, my word. I put those in the wrong spot. I'm sorry. That's in the wrong spot. My apologies, all right? All right. Uh, the next problem says that Tim buys a new car, all right? He uh, pays $20,000 for it. Now, it depreciates. In other words, it loses value uh, each year that he owns it. It depreciates at a rate of 11% per year, find its value after nine years. Well, again, this is a depreciation problem that uses that periodic formula. So I've got A equals P parentheses 1 plus R over N to the NT power. All right, let's fill in what we know. We know that the original value was $20,000, so the amount that it's going to be worth after the nine years will be 20000 times 1 plus... His percentage rate is 11%. Now, I can't put in 0.11, because if I do, that means that it's increasing value. It's actually decreasing in value, so you have to put in negative 0.11. Don't forget, if it's dropping in value, you gotta, or dropping in amount, you gotta put a negative R in. Now, how many times does it depreciate per year? Always just once. So, in fact, you don't even need to put the one if you don't want to. And raised to the NT power. Well, again, it's a, it's, uh, the, the depreciation happened once a year for nine years, so that's how we get the exponent of one times nine. Typing this, calc this uh, equation into my calculator, I'm going to get 20,000 parentheses one plus negative point one one close parentheses, and again, I don't need to divide by one, it's, it, that doesn't change anything, raised to the power of nine years. Now again, let it make sense, this car better not be worth more money than what it started with. If you get a number bigger than 20,000, you know you're doing something wrong, and typically it's because you're leaving out the negative sign on the R value. So we hit enter, and now look. So the value of this car after nine years would be worth 7,000 seven dollars and thirteen cents and that's how we get the appreciated value 
Okay, let's take a look at one more problem, and we'll call it a day. And this time, uh, we've got Cruella investing $4,000 into an account, which pays 2.3% APR. You ever hear that in a car commercial, where they, right there the, at the end, the guy talks really fast? 2.3% uh, APR financing available for well-qualified buyers, right? Well, the APR stands for the actual, the actual phrase annual, which means yearly, percentage, and then rate. APR is the, the annual percentage rate, right? Now, this one's compounded continuously. As soon as you see the word continuously, you need to think of the different formula. Not the one that we just, we've just we used in the last two examples, but the A equals P times E to the RT. You'll often hear a lot of teachers call this APERT. APERT. All right, so let's figure this out. We want to know how much money Cruella is going to have in her account if she started with $4,000 raise uh, times e to the rt power. Now, don't forget, e is not a variable. e is that number, 2.71, so it stays there. My percentage rate will be point, huh, 2.3%. How do I change that to a decimal? Well, don't forget, you slide it one, two spaces over, so it becomes to the point zero two three times the number of years, which would be eight years. So how much money should you going to have in her account? Well, again, once you put this in, the calculator will do the rest. You're going to go 4,000. Second ln introduces the e to the 0.023 power times 8. Hit enter, and you get $4,808.06. So her total amount of money will be $4,808.06. And so that's how much you'll have in her account after eight years. So she must have gained $800 in interest. Well, that's the start introduction to uh, word problems. I hope this makes sense to you. You do have to memorize those two formulas. In fact, because of that, other than watching this screencast, I want you to just memorize those two formulas just in case there is a quiz tomorrow. Uh, and we'll do the worksheets in class as a collective uh, group. Okay, comrades, I will talk to you later.